Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is going to be the first video in a short four video series in which we'll be creating a program to solve a particular type of puzzle named Suguru. Now I'm sure most of you guys are asking yourselves, what exactly is Suguru? Well, if you were like me a couple months ago, I too had no clue what exactly Suguru is. However, don't worry, Suguru isn't hard to understand and solving Suguru puzzles is pretty straightforward. So Suguru is a type of logic puzzle, and perhaps you've also heard of Sudoku, which is another type of logic puzzle. In fact, Sudoku is probably the most well-known logic puzzle. I mean, who hasn't played Sudoku on a plane ride or road trip? Therefore, I'm going to draw a few comparisons between Sudoku and Suguru. But first, here's a quick refresher on Sudoku. The concept of Sudoku was devised by Leonard Euler in the 1780s. And yes, you probably met Leonard Euler before because he's a famous mathematician. He created the irrational number E, and for any aspiring computer scientists, he was also influential in the creation of graph theory. Here's what a Sudoku puzzle looks like. In Sudoku, we have to find numbers that are unique to the row, column, and 3x3 area. These 3x3 areas divide the board into 9 equal sections. So to solve this, we would guess numbers that might work for each row, column, and area. For instance, we could guess one for right here, and because it's unique to the row, and also the column, and also the area, it would work for now. But say eventually down the line, we get to this cell, where one might be the only option we can use because all the other numbers are filled up. In that case, we would have a conflict in this column and we might have to change our approach. Anyways, I'm sure you guys have played uh, Sudoku before, so you get the idea. So moving on, let's meet Suguru. Suguru was devised by Nayaku Inaba, a prolific puzzle creator and inventor from Nagoya, Japan. Here's a typical Suguru board. As you can see, the grid setup looks very similar to Sudoku. However, there are a few key differences. The first key difference is the dimension of the board. Typically, Sudoku boards have nine rows and nine columns, although there are some exceptions where the boards can get kind of creative and trickier. However, Sudoku boards are not defined by a specific number of rows and columns. One board could have maybe four by four, four rows and four columns, while another board is 10 by 10, 10 rows and 10 columns. So the second key difference is the sub areas in the board. In Sudoku boards, the sub areas were three by three sections that divided the grid into nine equal uh, subsections. However, in Suguru, these sub areas are puzzle dependent. Some sub areas might only be one block, while others might be as large as the board itself. So for instance, on this board, we can see that we have this subsection containing the five and we also have uh, this subsection adjacent to it, which contains 1, 5, and 3. So the third and final difference is how we actually solve the puzzle. In Sudoku, we find numbers that are unique to the row, column, and 3x3 three three subsections. Now, Suguru, like Sudoku, also requires that we find numbers that are unique in each subsection. So for instance, if we have this five block section right here, we can only have numbers from one to five that are unique. So we need to have a one, a two, a three, a four, and a five. We couldn't have a, a one, a one, a two, a three, and a four, or we couldn't have a number that was outside of that one to five range, like a one, two, seven, eight, three. We need to have one to five. And also, unlike Sudoku, numbers do not need to be unique to the row and column. Rather, like numbers cannot be touching horizontally or vertically. So for instance, we have a three right here. Therefore, I cannot have a three in this area because it is touching it horizontally. Likewise, if we looked at five, we couldn't have a five in this area, this area, this area, or this area because they're touching the other five uh, horizontally or vertically. So 
to kind of solidify this concept of solving Seguru puzzles, try and solve this one on your own, and I will give you guys the answer shortly. All right, here's the solution. I hope if you guys tried, you got the answer right. But more importantly, I hope you understand the process of solving a Suguru. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed my introduction to Suguru. Stay tuned for the rest of the series. In the next video, we'll be figuring out a way to methodically solve these puzzles so that we can code an algorithm to solve it for us. Thank you for inviting me into your chunk of the internet for a few minutes. Remember to like, subscribe, and leave some constructive feedback. But most importantly, remember to keep programming.